G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we are at the final video of this really fun series I've been doing where I go through each of the 18 teams in reverse alphabetical order and I work through what their best 22 will likely be by round one of 2027. So the idea being that uh, not to try and actually predict what the team will look like, but more so identify uh, you know, what teams are vulnerable to players retiring, uh, what their list gaps are, and how strong their team is likely to be in three years, assuming they don't recruit anyone, which will obviously happen. Uh, but it kind of just maps out you know, list gaps, etc., as well. So today we are doing the Adelaide Crows, which means if you want to find any other club that I've done this series on, you can find it in a playlist on this channel called uh, AFL teams in three years and I've also done a 2024 analysis video on each of the 18 teams in a playlist called team based videos for 2024 so if you want to find all that content you can on this channel it is all completed and I'm already working on my next 18 team series Working through teams like this on an individual basis has been a lot of fun. It's not something I've done for a long time, uh, but it's allowed me to get in touch with teams on a much deeper level where I just sort of deep dive one team at a time. And it helps me get more of a well-rounded view of how teams are right now, but also what their future or immediate future might look like. So again, I'm, I'm going to work on a new series coming soon. And I think it's going to be teams, every team's like New Year's resolutions for 2024 and all the things they, uh, all the outcomes they want from the upcoming season. So if that sounds up your alley and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I'd really appreciate it if you did and help the channel grow. Now, without further ado, let's talk about the Adelaide Football Club, a team that has obviously sort of undergone a rebuild since uh, everything kind of went wrong after the 2017 Grand Final. Uh, no one rehashing things I've already said, but uh, nonetheless, they're, they're kind of an interesting case study in themselves in that despite a lot of things going wrong, you know, players leaving the club, the fall to a wooden spoon in 2020, I think what they've done is, uh, is draft really well, particularly players not in the first round. The players they've taken with later picks has really served Adelaide well. And I've made this comment for a number of years. It always felt like improvement was coming and you could see the spirit that Adelaide play with beyond the talent that was actually in that team, which does indicate they're well coached. So it was really fun to see. And this was one of the, the three-year projections that I was most excited to do. How far along they could be in three years because... They've probably achieved a little bit more than I expected each year up until this point. And I do think they're poised for potentially playing finals as early as next year. So we're going to have a look at this very young list. And the first thing we do is work through which players are likely to have retired three years from now. And there's four that I've selected. Okay, so one of them is Rory Sloan. He'll be 37. Tex Walker will be 36. Brody Smith will be 35. Rory Laird will be 33. All of those ages are by round one of 2027. So I basically said anyone born in March is a year older, if that makes sense. So those are the only four players that I could rule out from being available uh, in three years from now. And I'll talk about the players that are over 30 that I've left on this list for various reasons. So uh, Matthew Crouch, uh, Riley O'Brien, Kieran Strawn, Chris Burgess will all be 31. Crouch, uh, again, his his spot on the list has been a little bit tenuous over time. Uh, so there's a chance he gets to listed before then, but I'm going to assume and keep him available for this. Uh, I know that he ended the year really well and he could easily be best 22 still. Riley O'Brien as a Ruck 31. Strawn as well as a Ruckman. I've barely seen the guy play, um, but yeah, he'll still be available. Same thing with Burgess. Again, later start to his career. 31 should be fine. And the fifth player there is Ben Keyes, who will be 30 that year. So... Again, it's, there's not a lot of veterans in that team, which does indicate this Crow side is still still very, very young. Um, so without further ado, let's crack into what their best 24 will look like. I've been doing a best 24 extended bench to get more of an indication of what the immediate depth is across all positions. Now, I'll explain what the colors and numbers mean. Now, this team probably has the most green out of any team so far, and I'll explain what the green means if you don't know. It kind of indicates my confidence to which they'll, they'll still be in the best 22 uh, in three years' time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the more green, the better the team. It just means like that's I, I see that player being in that best 22. Uh, and yeah, there's a lot of green for the Adelaide Crows. With yellow, it just means I'm less sure um, for a number of reasons. It could be that they they haven't shown much at AFL level yet. Uh, there might be competition for that spot or they might be at the end of their career. I'm not too sure if they're still there. Um, absolutely, there's a number of factors there. I wouldn't get too caught up in it anyway. It's just a bit of a visual aid. The numbers in the brackets, the first number indicates their age by round one. The second number is a rough estimate of how many games experience they might have uh, based on you know how entrenched in the 22 they are currently right now. I've taken away a little bit for injury and suspension and stuff like that. Um, so let's talk about these uh, players line by line. So let's talk about the back line and it's a, it's a good back line, I think. 
The three tools I've gone for are Jordan Butts, who I think at 28 will be the number one key back, uh, with Josh Worrell also looking a bit of a likely type as a more of a third tool. I've kind of relegated him to that third tall position in this team. I think that kind of suits him a little bit more. And I've chucked Daniel Curtin as a legitimate key back uh, by the time he's 22 because he's got an early birthday. Now, straight off the bat, um, elephant in the room, Daniel Curtin could be a midfielder. And, uh, you know, Crows fans who probably follow their... Then the club media more so than me will probably know better whether Adelaide are outwardly saying, yeah, Daniel Curtin, we've drafted him as a midfielder. I'm, I'm not too sure. My personal feel is this his best football is played behind the ball. And I, st- I certainly think for the first three years of his career, that's probably where he should start. We might see him, you know, as he turns 21, as he turns 22, he's a pretty physically developed guy for a guy who's probably going to be pushing 200 centimeters by then. I think he's 197 now, I think. So... We could see him play as a bit of a centre-half back who maybe starts at the old stoppage. I personally think I like him as a defender. We'll see what happens. And if he does play as a midfielder, it does bring a different edge to that midfield, but maybe as an impact midfielder, only time will tell. But that's just my opinion. Michael Annie is a lock. Um, Wayne Miller is a lock as well at 29. And Lockie Shoulders probably... There's a few other defenders, you know, Will Hamill, uh, Patrick Parnell that I uh, considered as well. But I, I like what I've seen of Scholl, and I know that he's been in and out of the team. Not sure of how much of that is due to injury, but for me, I think he does add something different too as a small, quick, accurate uh, kicking player. So let's talk about uh, the midfield now. Uh, Jake Saligo, he's going to be a lock. He's a very good player. And one of those players that I was thinking of when I said that they've taken really good players with later picks, uh, which I think is really critical. A lot of the teams who build premiership lists do so by picking good good players in the second and third round. And Jake Saligo is a great example of that. Jordan Dawson, uh, the captain, will still be there at 29, naturally. And Chase Jones, I've got taking the other wing. I just relegated Hinge to the bench there, but at 28... He could still, uh, he could still obviously. Well, I'm still, I've got him in green, so I'm pretty confident he's, he's going to be around the mark. The on ballers, uh, I've gone for a different looking on ball division, and I just tried to be a little bit creative with this, and it could look different. So this is obviously a world where there's no Rory Laird, uh, Luke Pedler, and Charlie Edwards. I've, I've gone a bit early on Charlie Edwards. I just really liked him as a prospect. I talked about him a lot pre-draft, and he adds something different. So there's a good blend there of height and speed and dynamism as well. So Pedler, Edwards, and Dawson. Does it maybe lack a defensive edge, potentially? Uh, but I do like that mix. So obviously, Pedler hasn't proven himself as a midfielder yet. And he could just end up a really good impact forward. I'm not too sure. But I thought I'd mix it up, um, noting that the other options that I had there were Sean, Sean Berg, who I've chucked on the bench there. Obviously, you'd say Daniel Curtin is an option. You could even chuck Matthew Crouch in there, just because in this team, with no lead, he probably does offset that the other midfield types there quite well. And there's other players like Billy Dowling, who are just... I know that he was rated pre-draft. I just haven't seen a lot of him. Zach Taylor, Hugh Bond, I don't know anything about. So I, I went with Schoenberg as probably the next best mid um, in this team with Hinge as well as the other mid. So I, I, I like it. It's, it's diverse. It probably lacks a defensive edge, um, which means that the actual team that lines up for this team uh, in round one of 2027 might look very different. But from a talent point of view, I like it. Let's talk about the forward line. Again, we've still got those dynamic smalls and Rochelle and Rankin. Rochelle is another impact uh, forward that could, uh, sorry, play as an impact midfielder. Uh, I know we saw him increasingly get more center bounces and stuff like that. So I'm not too sure, but I still think he's such a good forward that you'd start him on the forward uh, line and rotate him through. The talls, Fogarty, or Fogarty, I'm going to call him Fogarty because I... <laughs> The name Fogarty just sounds wrong to me. And Phil Thorpe, uh, another funny sounding name to be honest. Yeah, those guys are pretty pretty much going to be entrenched. Obviously, Phil Thorpe was picked two and, and has progressed very, very acceptably for a tall prospect. Um, uh, you know, there's some other good key forwards in that year that he was taken in, Jamari Hagen and Logan McDonald, uh, who have probably kicked more goals. But we have to remember that they're all young key position players. And I think what Phil Thorpe has achieved so far as a ruck forward is still pretty solid. Uh, so yeah, he's a, he's a lock. I've chucked in their father son, who they have not drafted yet, in Tyler Welsh, which is a bold call, but he's probably going to be a first round draft pick. He's currently only 191 centimeters, which means he probably grow to that 194, 195 mark, potentially beyond. So from a height point of view, maybe he goes to center half forward by the time he's 20. That I've chucked him in a pocket because he's he's still going to be young, but I feel like he's good enough um, that he's going to crack games early. Braden Cook was one player I left out of my 2024 version of this video, uh, but he seems to have his fans and seems to be a high potential forward midfielder. At the moment, he's a bit more of a medium forward, but potentially he rotates through that midfield too. So there's a lot of options there, a lot of depth in this midfield, which I like a lot. 
To cover off some of the other players I benched, I did sideline Ben Keys. I just thought it would be a little bit more interesting to chuck him on the bench to see what the rest of the team looks like. Uh, but as a forward midfielder, again, he, he is different to, to the other types they have on the field there. So it's quite a diverse team. Uh, and Ned McHenry as well as a pressure forward is probably the next player I picked. Uh, who else have we got there? Nick Murray was uh, the key defensive option that I probably had next. I understand he's got an ACL at the moment. And I think there's still, there's a lot of subjectivity with these key back options for Adelaide. We've got a few decent prospects fighting for the same spot. That's just the way I ordered it. Uh, it's potentially some recency bias there. The other one was Mark Keane, who ended the year well, I understand, but uh, he just didn't quite make it. So Crows fans, let me know what you think of that particular mix that I've chosen. The other one is Oscar Ryan. You could easily chuck Oscar Ryan on the field for Lockie Scholl, uh, but I just thought I'd go conservative and chuck Ryan on the bench there. So to cover off any names that I uh, didn't even mention yet, I uh, talked about a lot of the the defensive options, like your Burgess types. I don't really know where he settles. Uh, Borlase as well, a rookie list. I'm not too sure if he's going to be there in three years. Um, I talked about the midfielder. Sam Berry's probably uh, adds something different to what they've got there as well, but I just had him out of the team. As for forwards, they've got a couple of tall to medium size options that have, uh, have the potential to be there. So Elliot Himmelberg, Again, I feel like he'll end up at GWS, to be honest. But he's, he's around the mark, but I think he would get sidelined in this scenario where we've got Fogarty, Welsh, and Phil Thorpe anyway. Uh, Gollant, or Gallant, sorry, whatever it is. Um, yeah, as a, as a sort of undersized, tall marking forward, he's about 193 centimeters, I think. And he's shown some good signs at AFL level. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's rife competition for a key forward spot in this team, particularly when you add Tyler Welsh. Um, and Lockie Murphy, I just had squeezed out of this team on the basis that I think he's going to be around the 30 mark. And Ned McHenry at 26, I think, has some potential to be that pressure forward that probably does set him out from the other small to medium types in this forward line. Your Rochelle's and your Rankins, maybe they need a McHenry in three years to be that uh, forward line enforcer. So overall, one of my comments on this team, talented. I actually just still think it's probably a little bit young. Uh, when was, so when I say young, I, I don't mean uh, young, too young to play finals or anything like that. I was kind of thinking in three years, will the Crows be legitimately contending? Uh, from an age profile, they'll probably be top four to six, I'd say. Uh, but there's there's a lot of talents there that, that could explode. And that, that's what makes this different. So, you know, Saligo and Pedler are players that are probably just on the brink. Chase Jones as well he showed some really good signs. Could he take his game to the next level? To what extent does Dan Curtin come in and become you know, a regular AFL player straight away? I think he'll become a, a regular player, no doubt about that. Um, and Rochelle and Rankin are already good players. And Braden Cook is probably another speculative one where it's just like, we know they have potential. They're probably a good comparison to the Essendon list that I did, um, you know, I don't even know how long ago, a few days ago on this channel, uh, where I just thought, you know, look, on talent, yes, but there's just a lot of players there that could go either way but they do have a lot of potential. The thing about Adelaide though, as I'll say this before, they're a strong organization who have gone through some shit, come out on top. I like to think my club West Coast is of the same ilk, obviously. <laughs> obviously it's looking pretty rough right now. Collingwood is another one. And I just feel like the Crows always have played a little bit better than I expect them to, or, or at least that they should from a list demographic point of view. I'm not trying to talk down the talent. What My point really that I'm saying here is that I see a talented team that probably isn't quite ready to, to genuinely compete in three years. It'll be around the mark. It'll be a finalist. But because they have that knack of just playing well as a team as, and as a system under Matthew Nix, I wouldn't limit their potential for what they could achieve in three years' time. So um, they're an interesting team. I do like to watch them. As much as there's been some narrative this year that I, I don't like them, um, it's definitely not true. I, I do see the potential and I've got some individuals in that team that I really like to watch as well. So again, probably just finding some answers from a midfield point of view. No, you know, Dawson's a lock there. Pedler and Ed, Edwards, uh, I've chucked in Edwards a bit boldly there, but if, if those, guys, those guys realize their potential, this team could be very, very dangerous. So anyway, guys, that's my take on the Crows. Uh, again, another team with a lot of potential. And uh, at the end of the day, it's it's an impossible task to explain to predict how many players are going to hit their potential in three years. Uh, but they're one of those teams where they could be great or they could be merely good. It's too early to say. But the balance is there. The firepower is there. The talent is there. 
And uh, yeah, I expect them to be at least a dangerous team in three years, if not a legitimate contender yet. So anyway, guys, that, that's my take. Uh, let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. Uh, fill me in on a few blanks, maybe a few things I got wrong in this video. Uh, will make me better at what I do. But as always, I appreciate you watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Look out for the next series starting probably tomorrow as you watch this. Uh, I'm about three year, three days ahead of what I'm uh, of what I'm actually releasing. So, but anyway, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.